Welcome to the video on addition and subtraction postulates. The purpose of this video is to remind with you how we add and subtract both segments and angles. All right, let's go ahead and we'll jump right into this. A lot of what we do, especially on this first page, it should feel very innate and very intuitive. In the first question here, it says we want to take and we want to add the distance between points A and G to the distance between points G and D. Notice that there's no line segment notation above either of those. And so when we see this with no line segment notation, we're really talking about distance. So if I go up into the picture, there's the distance from A to point G. We want to combine that with the distance from point G to point D. And because these three points are all collinear, meaning that they are on the same line segment, those two distances combine make the distance from point A to point D. So I would label that answer point A to point D. And then I'm going to approach each of, one of, each one of these in a similar fashion. The next one says if I take the distance from, points, from point B to point D and I combine that with the distance from point D to point E, and if I look at what that looks like in the picture, there's those two line segments combined that would be then equal to the distance between points D and E. So my answer here would be D to E, or the distance from D to E. All right, I want to jump right down to that one right underneath the one we just did. I want to say, look what happens when we try to combine the distance between point B and C and the distance between point G and F. So in looking at the diagram, I'm going to go and I'm going to highlight the distance from B to C. So B to C is right there. Add that to the distance between points G and F. And notice that these points are not all collinear. They are not on the same line segment. And so for this particular problem, we have no answer. At this point, what I want you to do is go ahead and pause the video and answer the remainder of the problems in this section. Don't go beneath the little smiley faces. Just do the addition problems. OK, now let's take a minute to check and make sure that the answers that you came up with are the same as the answers that I came up with. When you took the distance from A to G plus the distance from C to D, did you come up with no answer? If you did, you know you did that question right. If you didn't, we need to take a second look at it. So if I go through and combine A to G, plus C to D, again, we find they're not collinear, and that's why there's no answer. Down here, distance from C to D plus the distance from D to E should be the distance from C to E or the distance from E to C. So they're both the same distance. This middle one we said is no answer. This one is also no answer. This one is either D to B or B to D. Take your pick. F to C and B to E. If you have any questions about any of those, make a note of it so you can ask me the next time you come to class. We're going to go ahead now and move down by the smiley faces and take a look at some subtraction problems. These we're going to do in a similar fashion. The first one says take a look at distance AB, or distance between points A and B, and from that we want to subtract the distance between points A and B, so we want to take away that part and we want to know what we're left with. So your answer here is either going to be D to B or B to D, however you want to phrase that. They're one and the same. The next one, if I take a look at what we've got going on in the next problem, it says go ahead and take a, the distance between points C and D. So that's that entire line segment. From that, we want to take away the distance between points D and F. So we want to take away that part of the line segment. And what are we left with? Well, the distance between points F and C. Um, let's go ahead and let's jump down to this one down here, AB minus BC. So if I take a look at segment AB to begin with, that is right here in the picture. And from that, I take away the distance from B to C. B to C is that guy right there. This one, like some of the others that we had up at the top of this page, we can't really do. We can't take away the distance between points B and C from the distance between points A and B. And that one would be a no answer. 
And again, I'm going to have you go ahead and pause the video here, complete the rest of the problems in this section, and then you can resume the video and check your answers. Okay, so take a minute and check the answers in this section and make sure that you come up with the same things that I came up with. If you didn't, circle them, star them, highlight, make a note to ask yourself the next time we come to class. All right, down at the bottom of the page, the segment addition postulate. Here's what this says. It says if points A, B, and C are all on the same straight line, in other words, if they're all collinear, then the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C is always going to be equal to the entire distance from point A to point C. But again, they have to be collinear first. So I'm going to say if point B is between points A and C, in other words, if all three points are collinear, then the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C is equal to the distance from point A to point C. And likewise, anytime we know the distance from point A to point B plus the distance from point B to point C is equal to the distance between point A and point C, then it must be true that point B is between points A and C. In some textbooks, I've seen this called the betweenness postulate because, again, it is very important that all three of those points are collinear. And that word collinear is one that you should be familiar with, meaning that all three points are on the same line. So let's go ahead and see how we can use this to solve some problems in geometry. Up at the top of the next page, it tells us that we're given the diagram of the collinear points. They tell us that the distance between points W and X is 9, the distance between points Y and Z is 12, and the distance between points W and Z is 45. They want us to find the distance between points X and Y. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my diagram. And this is a good strategy that you should get into, not just for this problem, for, but for every problem we approach this year in geometry. You're going to find that it's going to be very helpful. So I'll go ahead and say distance between points W and X is 9. I'll label that in the diagram. Y to Z is 12. I'll label that in the diagram. W to Z, the length of the entire thing, is 45. And they want us to find the distance between points X and Y. I'm going to call that X, which might be a little bit ambiguous with the capital X already in the picture, but we're going to go with it. Well, I know that if I take and put all three of these line segments together, the result that I'm going to get is going to be the entire distance between points W and Z. So in other words, if I add the distance between points W and X plus the distance between points X and Y plus the distance between points Y and Z, that's going to be equal to the entire distance from point W to point Z. So that's what my equation is going to look like. So 9 plus X plus 12 has to be equal to 45. Or in other words, X plus 21 is equal to 45, making the value of X equal to 24. Unfortunately for me, they didn't ask us to find the length of or find segment X. They asked us to find the length of X to Y. But if I go back and look at the picture, X to Y is the same as segment X. So I'm going to go ahead and label my answer. Distance between points X and Y is 24. All right, number two is another one. It says, suppose point M is between points L and N. Use the segment addition postulate to solve for X and then find the length of each line segment. Unlike example one, where they gave us that pretty little diagram, in this particular example, they don't give us one. Since they don't give us a diagram, we're going to draw our diagram first. And this, too, important strategy that we're going to use over and over and over again this year. If they don't give you a diagram, make one. So I'm going to go ahead here and get a line segment set up. 
Notice that it says point M is in between points L and N. It doesn't say that point M is the midpoint. All I know from what they've given to us in the problem is I know that point L and point N are the mid or the end points of this segment. And I know that point M is somewhere in between. Point M could be here closer to L. Point M could be down here and be bus buds with point N. Or maybe point M is somewhere in the middle. But as long as I labeled my diagram with point M in between points L and N, I'm all good to go here. So I'm going to go ahead and put point M near point N. But again, as long as I drew it somewhere in between L and N, I'm good to go. So distance now between points L and M is 8x minus 3. Distance between points M and N is 12x minus 5. And the length of the entire line segment is 112. All right, so I know here now that if I take distance between points L and M and the distance between points M and N, that's going to be equal to the whole line segment. So 8x subtract 3 plus 12x subtract 5 is equal to 112. So 20x subtract 8 is equal to 112. When I add 8 to both sides, I find that 20x's are equal to 120. Or in other words, that the value of x is equal to 6. Now, it says solve for x. I did that. Check. But it also wants us to find the length of each segment. So L to M, if I go back up here, is worth 8x's minus 3. Or in other words, 8 times 6 minus 3, or 45. M to N is 12 times 6. Subtract 5 which is 67. And notice if I combine the two of those together, 45 plus 67, I end up with 112. That's the length of the whole segment. So I know that indeed I did that correctly. All right, number three has us on the coordinate axes. So I'm going to go ahead and graph these points. A has coordinates 1, 5, so there's point A. B has coordinates 6, 5, so there's point B. C has coordinates x, comma y, so that's kind of an unknown or a wild card. But they do tell us that point B is between points A and C. So in other words, I know that point C is somewhere here on the graph, and I know that his y value is going to have to be 5. If his y value wasn't 5, the same as these other guys, then point B wouldn't be in between points A and C. I also know that the distance from point A to point C is 14 units. So I can very easily solve this problem simply by counting. If I go from point A and move 14 units to the right, I'm going to end up at point C. And I can either count this as 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, and I have to move to the right 14. Or I can just say to myself that moving to the right 14 is going to be like adding 14 to the x value of point A. So that leaves me with a new x value or an x value at point C of 15 and a y value of 5. So point C has coordinates 15, 5. Now just like we can use addition postulate with angles, or with segments, we can also do addition postulate with segments. And if I look up at the top of the next page, that's exactly what I'm looking at. It says fill in the blank for each diagram. And in the first example, they want us to find the measurement of angle XLV. Well, if I go into the picture and find angle XLV, XLV is that yellow angle right there. It's made up of the two smaller angles, XLC and CLV. So in order to find the measure of that big, large yellow angle, I'm simply going to add the two smaller ones together. So 39 plus 73 is going to give me 112 degrees for the measure of angle XLV. 
In the next one, I'm trying to find the measure of angle WRF. So WRF is that green angle. It's made up of the 16 degree angle and the 37 degree angle. So when I combine those guys together, I end up with 53 degrees. And then the last one here. They tell us that the measure of angle ABD, so the whole big one, 89 degrees. ABC, the little piece, is 27 degrees. This guy I'm going to call X. He's the one that we're looking for in this particular problem. So I'm trying to find CBD. Angle CBD is that blue one right there. I can either subtract or I can write an equation that says 27 plus x is equal to 89 degrees. So when I subtract 27 from both sides, I find that the value of x is 62, and x was the measure of angle CBD, so 62 degrees. All right, I think we'll try one more down at the bottom of this page. It says, use the angle addition postulate to solve for x, and then once you solve for x, find the measure of the other two angles. So it says the measure of angle DX, DBC is 3x plus 7. So I'm going to go find DBC in my picture. It's that red angle right there. I'm going to label my diagram because that's a great habit to get into this year. ABC, well, angle ABC is this little purple wedge in here. His degree measure is 5x minus 2. And then ABD, ABD is the entire angle. So the entire thing is 61. Obviously, then, from this picture, it is definitely not drawn to scale. But I know from looking at the picture that the measure of angle ABC, the purple one, plus the measure of angle CBD, The red one has to be equal to the entire thing, or the measure of angle ABD, the blue one. So in other words, 5x minus 2, the little purple angle, plus 3x plus 7, the larger red angle, is equal to the entire blue angle, whose measure is 61 degrees. So when I combine like terms, 5x and 3x make 8x, plus 5 are equal to 61. When I subtract 5 from both sides, 8x's are equal to 56. Divide both sides by 8, x is equal to 7. So this question asked me to solve for x, done. And then it asked me to find the measures of the other two angles. So the measure of angle DBC, the red one, is going to be equal to 3 times 7 plus 7, or in other words, 28 degrees. The measure of angle ABC, the little purple one, is going to be equal to 5 times 7 minus 2, or 35 degrees. Sorry, 33 degrees. Let's go back and fix that. And as a quick check here, if I add these two guys together, 28 and 33, it does sum up to be 61. So I know that that is indeed correct. All right, up at the top of the next page is one more example, but I do believe that in the interest of time, we're going to postpone that one until you come back to class. As always, thank you. My deepest appreciation for the gift of your time. Hopefully everything that I mentioned in the video made sense, but for some reason, if it didn't, please either make a note to yourself in the margin so that you can ask me the next time you come back to class, or even better, send me an email so that the next time you come back to class, I'll remember to address your questions. Love you guys. Bye.